everyone. Welcome to the 20th episode of Concussion Chats. My name is Taya. Concussion Chats is a podcast hosted by McGill students for the Concussion Legacy Foundation with the help of Nick from Concussion Talk Podcast. We're dedicated to providing strength and hope to those suffering from concussions through sharing experience. Today, we're going to do a special get to know the host episode. Um, today, we have a recording of our host, Nick, uh, which will be followed by a Q&A with Nick. Um, so Nick is the creator and writer of Concussion Talk blog since 2010 and the host and producer of Concussion Talk podcast since 2015. He's also the author of Detour, Cycling, Coma, and Living with Brain Injury. In August 2003, while in Victoria, B.C., doing his master's, um, he he was severely brain injured while riding his bike. He was in a medically induced coma for two weeks and in inpatient rehab at home in St. John's for six months learning how to walk and talk. He also spent a lot of time with occupational therapy, learning what daily living would be like. He completed his master's in 2006 and then worked in Ottawa for three years um, at Export Development Canada. And in 2010, he left his permanent job there and went back to St. John's to work at the government of Newfoundland um, and started Concussion Talk blog. Nick stays physically active with yoga, Pilates, walking, and his favorite activity, swimming, COVID permitting. He's very happy, but to say why or how is too much for this short while. In truth, there are too many intersecting and ever-changing reasons. Nevertheless, Nick is happy. And yeah, and so I guess, I, I mean, I, as Tay and Emily know, I've listened to my past 19 of these, at least, and plus I did a few more before I started doing these, so over 20. And uh, and we, uh, I guess most of us laugh at their background, and I'll give a brief background of site this within the 10 minutes, 12 minutes, whatever. And uh, I grew up, in, I'm from St. John's, and as Tay has mentioned, and uh, I I grew up, I wasn't, I, was, I always played a lot of sports. I played like, I'm just not, that's, I wasn't necessarily the best player, or the best star, but I was, I was like on the team, and I was always, I was always good. Like, I was always decent. And uh, I pride myself on that, but especially more. But, and that, and and then in that, but I was never like so good that one sport that was like that was remarkable, and uh, by the plan. And uh, and when and then and when I was in, when I was thirteen, I started playing water polo. And I played water polo from thirteen till till to, to the action really, and uh, that was like my sport. That was the part I loved, and I was actually pretty good at that one. And uh, anyway, and uh, so th- so then then after. Then I was playing that in university at Queen. I went to Queens. When we went to St. John's, I went to University of Ontario, and uh, there I met my, my best friends there. And, I, and we were one day we were chatting one summer. It was, it was the summer of '99, 2000. Anyway, 2000 probably. And we were just chatting a bit. Oh, be great to be great to like, we're watching. I don't know. It was most of the morning. We're hungover. We we're watching a short French highlights, and we we're like. Wonder how long we started talking about that, and then we decided that kind of said, "Okay, let's bike cross Canada." And we graduated, so we, we decided to bike cross Canada. Then, so we did that, and we just made a plan. And I talked about it. And fourth year came, and he's like, he came up to me. He said, "My parents said it's okay." And I was like, I "Said what's okay?" He's like, "If I, if they'll help me out if I bike cross Canada with you." And I was like, "Oh yeah, right." So then I had to ask my parents, like, "Can you guys spot, <laughs> spot me a, a bike?" Because we didn't even have a bike, and uh, we didn't have a bike, but you know. I mean, so I sat, so I did that summer with Bike Cross Canada, and that's when I really my love of cycling. And I always watched those like triathlon stuff, those like Ironman race things on NBC. And uh, I like, I thought that was pretty cool. I like they have long, uh, anyway, I like a long race, although I was never, didn't like running. So, but I, anyway, so when, that, when I heard in Queens, we, we did Bike Cross Canada, but then, and then in, 2002, then in 03, I went to Victoria, BC doing after, and I was mostly to pull over. Like, wanted to do a PhD in foreign relations, international relations, international relations, something like that. And uh, so that, so I moved there, did and started started that process. My master's degree was raised, and I started doing you know, triathlon because I was in Victoria when I was two places to do it. So 
All right, so I did that and uh, so in that summer in Kakura was amazing. And so every Friday of that summer from May until, until August 1st, we biked, we, we go on cycling every Friday morning of like, like two hours, two hours around the outside of Korea, around like, cause they are, they're all from the Korea, except for me. So they have new good routes and good places to go. And, and so, anyway, so one thing, I guess like I said, I was doing this summer, it was really warm and, and dry, unfortunately. So there lots of forest fires. And uh, so we had Demaru that morning, uh, August 1st, 03. We'd done, I'd done a buy, I'd done a few triathlons at that point. I had obviously like a, a lot, but uh, I was going on the hill, going on with one hill that quickly and nice. Anyway, I sort of, kind of sort of avoid someone who's coming up the hill because I think I took a wide turn. And uh, and, we, and then I ended up coming up, I hit a tree with my head and the helmet, the helmet shattered, which is supposed to do like this job. But um, then I, so I was in a coma for two weeks. And, uh, and uh, anyway, so I had to come back to so the hospital. And, and the thing is, like, I can't explain. Everyone says, like, I've learned these, these, uh, these, these groups, these podcasts that I do with Emily and Taya. I hear about like, people remembering stuff. Like, and I don't remember anything for really. I mean, I remember the Korea, I remember obviously being there. And I remember the hospital stuff. I don't remember anything sequential. I can't tell you when I first recognized that I had a problem. But when I first understood I had a problem was probably after it was after I'm back to St. John's, after I did my rehab and we have in, inpatient rehab and then outpatient rehab and I was still not doing anything. And then I said, okay, well that's not like I gotta go back to school, go back to university. I went back to university in 05 and uh finished my master's. And uh, so so then, and then I found out I was like, this is, I'm still wasn't better. And I was just working out and swimming, doing as much physiotherapy as I could. Even though it's back in Korea, I was doing physiotherapy. And uh, I, I was, so I, I, I got down a lot of all, and I worked on a lot for three years, which was, I was alone, it was, it was tough. I, I met some good friends there. Good, and uh, and so it was, and it was important, it was a good time, but I got you know, homesick and I just had them and lost my, my, my family. I felt I had to get my family. So I came home to, to my family in St. John's and I've lived here since. And I stopped working. I worked, I came back home only when I got a job, when I got a job here. And I got a job here in May of 2010. And then, so I moved back home and then I worked until October of 2011. And then I stopped because my contract ran out and I wasn't rehired. And uh, and then actually I thought I said, I'm not gonna start applying for other jobs, I'm gonna write a book and just, and, and I need some time away because being in the office all the time was, a bit, it was tough. And uh, so, so I did that and, uh, and, I, and since, so since I stopped, since basically I stopped working is when I really realized that it took me like, just like 10 years to realize that wasn't I wasn't just gonna be, you know get better and you know, be like see perfectly fine and 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 it'll move as well as I did and uh, I mean that was I was and I, when I was in here when I was banged when I was 23 years old in August 1st of 03 I was in I was in probably definitely the best shape of my life I was like and I was you know, there was nothing nothing up for the I was I was I was great and uh I was just active very physically active I was actually in probably because I had that work time in Ottawa plan for that that uh, that fall because we had the co-op program, master's program, a co-op program, and uh, so anyway, so I so I was I was actually planning to back go back to playing water polo instead of doing triathlon. I was going to turn my attention back to water polo, but uh, but that didn't happen obviously, and uh, so um, but this that was just, that's just my just long story my story. And uh, I am because Sam was long story. So I learned that in 2010 when I got back here, I decided that because not a lot, I was I was writing a lot for but that my job was writing and I've written little, like short little pithy sentences about certain countries and and like what their you know what their investment are looks basically and I've researched for that 
what their how their political situation looked and how good they were to invest in and stuff like that. So it was a really, really interesting job. And uh, and anyways, but then I uh, was saying, oh yeah, so I realized I know where I I saw a psychologist in Alba and I saw I saw a speech therapist once maybe or I mean I saw a physio maybe I don't know if I saw any physio or about physio in Ottawa, but I didn't see much didn't do much therapy but I didn't feel like I needed it because I was walking to and from work and my problems all seemed to be physical like I wasn't wasn't really didn't really find that me and my mental problems were are big, but they, I guess not, they're, they're not really big because, because, uh, anyway, so that was, I'm going to have to attach it now. Um, just for one of my things that I'm, um, so what I, so I was, uh, so I, so it's funny, I think about writing and being, uh, um, writing a lot is that I realized that um, I like writing and that it helps me get, get my feelings out and my words and thoughts out. So I started writing a blog and then, uh, then I was writing the, for like five years and it was, all right, but I wrote mostly about injuries and in sports. I wanted to make a popular blog, get some actually make some money, and uh, and then I wrote, and then I started writing about more about me, but not a lot. But then I said, you know, I'm gonna write a, a podcast. Podcast. I was listening to a podcast from days from like oh seven. I started listening to podcasts because they're like the good podcasts about the economics and. You know, boring stuff, but you know, there's a good podcast, click on a good podcast about the downturn of the economy when that happened in 08. And, we, and uh, so then I started doing podcasts, and that's been that's been really good, that's been great. And this and with T and Emily doing the podcast to, with uh, with them, it's been great too. And uh, and so, yeah, so I, so I built up a bit more, and uh, but I, but I, but I'm missing it, saying is that like, I mean. I have my, 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 my physical problems are more noticeably than the mental ones. Like my physical ones are, I, I can't walk, I can't walk as well. I'm, it's good balance. I used to play polo 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 and triathlon and cycle a lot and stuff. So I, I bounce, but I didn't, I don't have balance anymore. I'm, although I'm doing yoga now and that's helping a lot. And uh, I can't move as quickly. My left side is weak and only not as much weak as I'm coordinated. Um, I, and my, I get fatigue, obviously. Um, I, have double, I have double vision, which is the, the big detriment, but I actually had to mention it because it's just part of my life, it's just what I see. Think of what, think of my life, and you know, think of what I look at. My look at is, is normal. It's just, it's just fine. It's just like, it's, you know, it's double. And uh, so that, that's the only um, What else? My speech is, I don't know if you can tell, because you guys just met me, except for Tay and Emily, they have only known me since my injury. So, but my speech is like this, I and mean, it's very difficult. Uh, for example, yesterday, I mean, I'm right, I'm doing the course with this app, I'll, I don't want to sell my cell thing, but like this app, well, this law, and I'm doing a course then, and, uh, and I was trying to record yesterday, and I was, uh, and I did, but it took me forever, and I had to stop, and, and we saw, and then take back in the day, said, start running because your sound is different. And I'm like, well, of course it's different because I'm recording it, so I'm starting to you know, move and stuff, and it's hard to, but anyway, so there's just issues with my speech that make it difficult to set a regular pattern of breathing and stuff. Um, but but uh, what I'm going to make a point about is that my, uh, like brain, my brain injury is, it's different than concussions. It's in the multiple concussions. And I didn't, it didn't, my life didn't go on as normal after my brain injury. Like your concussion, your life can kind of go on like not as normal, but like you'd, you'd think you'd fight through it, and you'd, which is wrong to do obviously, but you'd, you'd fight, you'd, you'd go back, everyone, look, everyone looks at you and says, okay, well, you're fine. You just hit your head, you're fine. But with me, it was like, it wasn't just, well, they couldn't just do that because I was in hospital, I was obviously, it was a, you know, it was a bad situation. It was very, it was very, very obvious. They had to come see me in like, looking like not being able to talk in a wheelchair and stuff. And so it was very, it was very black and white about my entry. And, uh, and, and I think that kind of, that's made it, that has made the natural aspect easier for me because although it was difficult to come around to it, like I told you, so like I said, it took me like 10 years or over 10 years probably, and I'm still not probably now as good as I can be, but, you know, whatever, that's a journey. And uh, 
So, well, my was very black and white. I was fine, and then I wasn't fine. There's, I mean, there's an obvious delineation between when it was and now. When you have concussion, it's difficult to see for other people to really recognize that. Oh yeah, you, this is when you start acting differently, and this is then you can see yourself. This is okay. I think it was this concussion when they, when I started talking weird. This concussion, I started feeling weird, but you don't know for sure, and this. It's not as clear, or mine was it's very clear. I was, I was in good shape and I was fine. And then I, all of a sudden I was not. And, uh, and that has led me to recognize that, that like brain injury is as much as you don't want to think about it, it is part of your life. So you say this happened to me, it didn't happen to you. It happened like as part of your life. Like it's not like you can just say, I was, I was going to be, a, I was going to be a doctor. I was going to be a speaker you know, across the world. And I was told that I was going to be an actress, but you, that was like your, your expectations, your plan, but not necessarily what you were going to do because your life is just, is, is not written out before you already. It's, there's no, there's no one scheme. This life is just what happens. Like, I didn't think, I didn't think it was going to be, I thought it was going to be, a, you know, I don't know, First, I when I was younger, probably a doctor, and then, and then like a, I thought I was going to be like a, a professor or something like that, or, you know. But, but life takes you in a different way. I mean, life it just decides for itself, and like life is what happens, and it's not, it doesn't depend on what you think. You can have intentions to do whatever, and if you're lucky, then some people, people like, like, like for example, like, like Tom Brady, for example. I don't know, I don't like, I don't like that much, but you know, like, it's like things were happening, they would do well. He just wanted to be a professional, professional athlete, and he was, and he's been very successful. I mean, he wanted to win, and he won, and he did all that stuff. But like, that's because he then has that need very serious. Like, I think seriously, game changes happen. And uh, that's the thing you gotta just realize. The thing is, I've realized, mostly you have realized, but I've realized that. Life is just, it's just what happens. And uh, and to think that, to say that like I was gonna be something different or I was, I mean, life was heading this way. Life wasn't heading anyway. Life was just, life was just happening. And I was, I'm part of it. Life is like the world and everything happens in the world. But that's what goes on so on. And the way I fit in that is just, that's the way, so this is the way I fit in that world it's just, it's that, I was I was doing behind that and I injured, but it didn't happen to me. Just just an event. Just it's it's kind of boring statistical stuff. It's like it's like it's again that some bad stuff's gonna happen and happen to you know, some not, you know, not be bad stuff, but some stuff you don't think is gonna happen. And then all of a sudden it does, and it's not like you have to deal with it. It's just that's your life, and uh, that may sound that probably sounds very harsh, but uh, or a bit like I don't know depressing to some people, but it is just like, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm happy because I, I know like that I'm, I mean, I'm fine, whatever happens, I'm not, but I'm part of it. I mean, I mean, I don't know, I can't really describe it, but I just, I'm not worried about anything that happens in the, I guess that's gonna be, a, like I say, a piece that's just a bit, you probably can't get that unless you've been, you know, had some serious happen to you and you really recognize that that's the that's the moment you realize that that something else is that there is a greater uh greater power but like because i'm not necessarily doing that stuff but like there's something there's like you can't control everything it's basically letting go was made made my main i guess a long way to get there but letting go and i've talked for too long now i think i don't know which one would be you I felt like it's telling you that. So 14 minutes? 14, 13? Maybe. I, I don't really know. I wasn't paying attention. I'm, brown, I'm getting gotta, rambling now. I'm rambling now. So. five if you want. No, nah, no, I'm just rambling now. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> thanks, Nick. Uh, today I have Emily, who is also part of Miguel Students for Concussion Legacy Foundation, Nick from Concussion Talk Podcast, and his co-host, Aaron. Um, Aaron is also the coordinator for the Newfoundland and Labrador Brain Injury Association joining me. Uh, so Emily, do you want to kick it off with our first question for Nick? Yeah, um, first just like a question related to the talk and then I think 
Maybe we can just ask you some questions outside of concussion. Since Go for it. You don't, or outside of traumatic brain injury, I should yeah. say. Okay. Um, but to bring it back to like kind of what the group was talking about the other day after your talk, um, I think a lot of what it was is everyone was just like <laughs> wondering how you have such um, such a positive and accepting, like really accepting mindset. Um, I think that was really, inspiring, really inspiring, inspiring to a lot of people. Well, I, thank you. Thanks a lot. Um, I just, unfortunately, for like what I was saying, like the last time, then I think the important answer is just time. And, uh, you know, but again, like I was saying, the last time on Thursday, people don't want to hear that. Just that, it, but it's been, you know, almost, almost 18 years now. And, uh, no, not the this, this can be, I'd say not been kind of be all at once now, but I mean, de developed over 18 years, I the, the other thing too. And uh, it's not just like that I've just recently had this sort of more accepting, I've been accepting the whole time, I think, it's just that, it, the, you know, the Terry Fox said, you know, why not me? Like, he'll say, you know, he'll say, why me? Why me? Well, why not me? And that's kind of been my, that's been my attitude the whole time. And, uh, and I just, I don't know, I just, I mean, I was trying to say before, to them, I was saying that, uh, to the group, I was saying that, you know, that the whole thing about the, the delineation between being fine and having brain injury was very apparent for me, but that also sounds as though, because it was like, not like when you have a concussion, it's like, you look the same, you act the same, you look the same, you don't act the same, but, uh, you look the same, and people are like, what's wrong with you? Why are you doing things differently? But not I me. Mean, it was very. It was a very one event. Is obviously I was in a hospital and I was in a coma. So it's very apparent that I was injured. But I also, then I thought about it more. It was. I did. That was like I didn't come to that. That didn't happen. I was like that was you know, ten years. There was like ten years to go when I was acting. Then I was and, and people weren't. People didn't really know because I was. I would move around a lot. Like I was injured in, in BC and I was away from St. John's for five years before the injury and stuff. So people never really, it was, I was, I was acting, was very apparent the injury, but it was a different set of people that I was interacting with. So it was, to them, it was just like, still, but anyway, that's, so I guess uh, that's not the answer to Emily's question. Though. Emily's question was, how have I had to been, been good? No, but I, I, I think you're, yeah. I think the, like the Terry Fox, like, why not yeah. anything? Yeah. I think, that's a that's, that's a, definitely that's probably, just like the like, why not me like I mean it's just like yeah. that's the thing I've never I noticed I always thought like well why I mean I, there's no reason why it couldn't be me and that's just yeah. the basic statistics stat stuff and like a biology like science stuff just that, like it's gonna happen and you know it's, it has to happen to someone Mm -hmm. Just you can, just I don't know. Just why not? I mean, you know, yeah. There's no more. No, I, there's no more other reason than that. And then, and yeah. just like that was. I guess my attitude has been similar my whole life. Just that I've been a pretty positive person. And uh, then when the age happens, there's you appreciate stuff more. Perspective changes a bit, and uh, and then yeah, then you get the whole why not thing. So that's the best I can do. Yeah. <laughs> No, I think it really sounds like you've managed to do this, um, just taking life as it comes. And yeah. That's really incredible. Thanks. Thanks. Um, um, the other thing, I think you had mentioned walking a lot is helpful for you, but what do yeah. you do? Do you have, you know, not, I know you have probably bad physical days, but do you have like bad mental or emotional days? I I tend not that much my or rarely my mental stuff my physical my physical helps my mental I find a lot like when I'm even in this lockdown I've been active and we haven't had things except for this past month there's been a bit more lockdown here but before that we've been lucky enough that we live in a small a small island so well it's a big island but it's a small population and uh, and we haven't had much of a reason that it's you know inside and. I get out and I do stuff, and even when I don't, even when this, even this past month where it's been a bit more hectic, I've stayed in shape. And I think a big thing, again, probably unfortunate for a lot of people, is 
my family is so close, and like my mom and my sister, and the birds are very close to me, like, and uh, and my friends, and it's just, I think, honestly, I don't know, maybe it's just the size of the city I live in that's just, that's just so small, and people don't live, live like, the first thing people live away from me is my best friend lives, you know, 25 minutes away, or 20 minutes away, and, and that's like, you know, that's like, Whoa, well, he lives way over there. He lives out out by the airport, and that's a oh wow, what a drive that is! It's but really it's not. Far. It's I you know it's like it's so far away, but it's not. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, I mean, so physically, I just, I just, I stay active, and that I think that does help me mentally. I don't have to prepare myself mentally for anything. I don't know. There's no mantra. No. I guess I do meditation by just thinking a lot. Let's begin when my my mind is always worked. I just I maybe said I think too much, and that's got me into like I'm like before I like, wouldn't say like, that ten years after my marriage, I was a bit more feeling depressed every now and then and stuff. That like I just never never horribly, and uh, I just thinking about it maybe it helps me out just thinking about life in general. So. I mean, there's no, yeah, there's no, men, there's no tricks to do mentally, fixing anything, but I just, just, meditation by, to the living, just by every, all the things of thinking and stuff, and walking around, looking at stuff, and when I'm focused, I'm doing a, an exercise, like Emily is right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's stretching the nerves. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, I mean, like, with, like, your friends and family living close by, do you think, like, I mean, their support would be um, a big contributing factor to, like, your positive outlook and, like, you're kind of, like, not having, like you said, like, you don't really have any mental struggles. Um, I think like I think it's, I think it's definitely that they live close and that, I mean, if one day after a walk, I, and I and also I think another thing actually for that is that although my friends as good they're good my friends and family live close, I do I have I do like being alone like that's I love I love seeing my friends stuff too but I am very I do love like my being like going for walks for myself like a lot of time, lot of time. I for walks with friends which is great but if I don't that's fine because I like walking alone I like going for a uh, swimming is also mm -hmm. and that size you has to be solitary because your head's in the water and uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> so you know so and uh yoga is of course very solitary very mindful so and like that implies the same thing like those are very just inward looking i guess and uh but yeah but i mean family being close is just 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 a good even though i like i said i like being alone if i want company i know they're there and and it's not like it's, it's not always going to be there. Everyone's not going to be there all the time, right? Every three seconds, but second, but I mean, it's never for a long time to wait for yeah. support. So I'm just very fortunate like, that way. And, uh, and I just, I know like, the whole thing of the taking life as it comes and just kind of been that, that if they're not there, they're not there. Like my My, my best friends are, so my, I, I don't want to not just disparage, disparage anybody, but uh, my best friends are the ones, my friends in Ontario who I went to university with, and they're, but we talk on WhatsApp all the time, and uh, and we just talk, like, there's nothing deep, but we, we talk definitely nothing deep, we talk nonsense, mm -hmm. but uh, still, <laughs> it's just, it's just that they're there, and I know I'm the, I see them all the time, they're supportive, and it's just, yeah, I mean, there's no, it's just crazy there. I mean, it's just convenient, I guess. It sounds crass, yeah. but it is. It's convenient that they're there and friends are everywhere. It's just so close and stuff. And yeah, they leave me alone. And I mean, like, I, yeah. And I guess, oh, like, it's also kind of like comfort yeah. in a sense. Like, I mean, like, I know for me, like, I, I like being alone, but like, now that, like, you know, I can't see people, yeah. I want to see people. Like, yeah. yeah, exactly. The I, same thing. Yeah, no. That's, yeah, that's and I'm with them that one. Like, and every night, I'm like, I wish someone was good. Just go to the restaurant, go to the coffee shop, mm -hmm. but I can't yeah. now because it's 
but it's not like disastrous. It's not like, oh my God, now what am I going to do? Yeah, so, what, what am I going to do with my throat? Make coffee um, and stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, like, like, Emily and I were talking and, like, we were discussing, like, like, who are you outside of, like, um, traumatic brain injury and, like, uh, concussion talk and, um, like, all that stuff. Like, who are you as a person? Like, well, that's about the, you. That's the thing. That's what the... I mean, that's why I think I'm, you know, more boring. Like, people, people will say, oh, you're not boring. Oh, being nice. But, like, I think I'm pretty boring. But uh, I just... That is me. Like, I am. Like, that, I'm, I was, I'm tired of concussion talk. It's not really... Now you're done with life, like that's because the concussion talk, concussion talk is just part of what I do. I can't really say what I'm out that do out that because I'm not always actively thinking about it. But like, I'll meet somebody or see something, and I'll be like, "Well, that'd be good to have on concussion talk," or, or that's a good point. I should note that in my when I if I well I used to write, but I don't hardly to write anymore, which is just I don't know, mm-hmm. I don't know what that's just I get to have done so much. Um, yeah. But uh, I, 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 again, I, I kind of, Emily kind of, or you did, I guess, said that, you know, it's yoga, walking, and swing. I, mean, I used to walk, play a lot of polo, and I used to love that. But uh, my double, been double vision in my brain injury. Not to, I don't think my brain injury is much, although you, know, you got to be careful, because what if you, and the water polo is not on the sport in Christian Canada, but it does, you do get, it is, it is honestly, a beaut- they found, but it's, you know, it is violent, and uh, there's a you know a lot of contact net, so I gotta watch. You can't gotta be careful. You go on those back sports like that. You're not gonna get another concussion or head injury. But uh, mm-hmm. swimming is kind of, and I, but I well, luckily for me again again luck. The last year of water injury, I was doing a triathlon and cycling, and, uh, and those are the and the, I can just I swim a lot now. And outdoor swimming last summer was just. Just an amazing thing to do, and I can't wait to do it this summer and if this summer ever comes. And, uh, mm-hmm. and yeah, and uh, just uh, walking is like uh, I hate running inside. I, I love cycling, I hate running, but uh, doing that, so those solo activities are, yeah, kind of they're that. And I just, I just that's me. I like just, I don't know, I'm I like to think I'm, I'm funny or have some humor, but I mean. That's not for me to judge, and uh, <laughs> and you know, like I mean, I I think I, you're a funny I, guy. Yeah, I, I think you're a funny guy. <laughs> I think you got some humor. And I like to. I don't know. I just I'm you know positive, and I but I'm not like I don't I don't like to be overbearing. I'm big, I really like to be just. I don't be in your face about any of my anything. Like if I am, that's accidental, and I apologize or whatever. Or, or don't apologize, don't end, depending on it. But it happens why people are offended because yeah, that's a, yeah. not a dull issue. But uh, yeah, but um, I mean, I am basically what you read or we're here on, what you guys have seen every week is, I am, there's not, there's no show I'm giving you guys. I'm just, no, I didn't that's what I, I, I know. You know. But I mean, like, <laughs> hey, cool. Um, yeah. <laughs> background, Aaron. <laughs> Yeah, yeah wind, something wind, did... windows up. <laughs> was that Windows ninety five or? I have no idea. <laughs> a button popped up on my screen, and I was like, "What is this?" But, sorry. <laughs> oh no, that's no problem. I'm just about. I mean, that's that's it, really. I mean, I wish I could yeah. had some more exciting to say, but again, now COVID kind of restricts what you can yeah. do and how you how you can express myself differently. But basically, it does what shouldn't really matter is that activities outside just walking and cycling and not cycling swimming and yoga and yeah i mean i mean i keep myself I'd say, yeah hey that was good um i mean i feel like like the fact that like you like everything like you kind of like think like oh that'd be great for the podcast or like oh i should do, like things like that like i mean that being like like always kind of like what you think of and like your go-to thing like there's nothing wrong with that either yeah. like uh that i mean i feel like 
It's an I'm eager like for knowledge and wanting to help as well. Yeah, like those are and big like personality traits that true. show through through there this. There you go. Yeah, Oops. that's true. Aaron just Aaron just gave the answer to that Ooh. question. So you're like eager for knowledge, always wanting to help others. Like we all said, you were funny. We all agreed on that one. And, <laughs> well, you know, so yeah, Emily. I think that I like yeah. You're like confidence, but like laid back confidence. Like yeah. you're just very go with the flow. I love that. <laughs> um, and I. I do think you're funny. I think sometimes you crack jokes and my brain, my brain has like serious mode and funny mode. And sometimes it takes a second for it to adjust and you'll crack a joke. And then like three minutes later, I'm like, oh, that's funny. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> um, like somebody will crack a joke and I just pause and then I keep going if I'm in serious mode. And it takes it's like hard for me to like adjust. But so many moments I've been like, oh, that was funny. I missed that. That flew right over my head. Um, but my one, just... my one question, um, is do you listen to music as a music person? This is what I like to always ask. Yeah, I, I, yeah, do you listen to music and what I, kind I, is I, so? I love music, but I mean, there's never any, I used to think there was like, a like in the nineties or like the alternative, like I did like, I do like, I like love the tragedy hip. Which I don't. If you're as American, if you know them much, mm -hmm. but if I if you do know, you've been Canada for a while. But um, <laughs> um, I listen to just like okay, well, you know the the War on Drugs is still a lot. I've listened to like a lot the the album by them in twenty fourteen, fifteen, I mean fourteen. Mm -hmm. I, think. I listened to that a lot, and or fifteen, I guess it was. But anyway, um. But that's not to say the type of music. I like that music, obviously. I like, but I listen to, I guess say right now, I listen to a lot of just like my 90s music that I listen to then and like going, going to water polo practice and going to university. Although university has the music that was just out in, in clubs and bars and stuff and that's kind of just mundane, top 40, you know, or, okay. or different. But so not that, not 40, but like, yeah, like, I just know, like, I like I guess rock is I like like Pearl Jam and and uh, I was gonna ask my favorite album I think the best album I have is uh, Alice in Chains Unpl Unplugged from like ninety three mm -hmm. or four like that but just a uh, great album but uh and Are you MTV, a MTV guy? I I do like them I did I did like them but uh, I didn't say I'm a Soundgarden guy but I did have the do a couple of good albums and uh, they're yeah I like music yeah. Okay. Last question. Uh, do you like some? Do you like it last second? What? You like Soundgarden? I love Soundgarden. I love Chris Cornell. He's such a good singer. I'm you're that's guy. like who's because you're 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 that much younger that because you guys all are that who's your music? What, do you have a band that you like or? Don't be I fooled mean, by Emily's age. She is an old. I know. Well, Soundgarden. Kid. I saw that's an old soul. Yeah, I have been told multiple times this week I'm kind of old, so I'm just going with it. I love, I have a Led Zeppelin tattoo. Okay, well, I'm, um, not, I'm, not, I'm not that uh, old. I always forget about that. You have like a big I one like on your back? of your back? You no, no, your no back. it's just on my bicep. Oh, you went to your back, I was like, what is this? It's the John, it's the symbol John Paul Jones chose for their fourth album, for Zeppelin 4. Okay, not their fourth I had the album, I had the album. Oh, such a good one. But Zeppelin 2 is my favorite. But yeah, I love my Stone Temple Pilots and my Soundgarden. Yeah. I'm not huge on Pearl Jam, but I love my Foo Fighters. I have yes. one question for you, though, and then maybe Aaron has okay. a random question. Okay. Or maybe okay. not. I've got to hear all, their, I got to hear all their, uh, their sound music choices, but I uh, yeah. hear your question. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you did answer my question, but... What if you could see any band in their prime? Who would it be? Well, what well, I did see, look, I got to see the hip, but I mean, because I, mm -hmm. I love them so much. You guys, but it's too young for it. That's it's, it's not American, so you know it's about them. But um, so other, other than the hip, uh, 
Dave Matthews has been a fun concert because he, he put out, he puts out concerts, did a lot of them. He was been fun. Um, maybe Pearl Jam or. Yeah, we can. these all bands that came here. Well, not Dave Matthews didn't, but the hip president came here in 2010, but I moved away. I didn't see him there, here. And, uh, but, uh, I would have seen them in like 96, or whatever. Like, not like not now. Yeah. Year, big year, yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the hip or, or like Pearl Jam or somebody. So it's not going to be too exciting difference. But I do love. I love this music, but there's nobody that I can think of that I'd love to see that's, that's going to blow you away. I'm not that into into like the different type. Well, I do, although the war on drugs, we, we do, they would they'd be fun to get this. I don't know how good they are live, but because I'm not into that. I'm not, I don't play, never played music, never played an instrument. Mm -hmm. I did, I guess I played piano when I was 10 for like a year or two. That was going to be my next question. Oh, yeah, was like, oh, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, Dad. Oh, oh yes, I, I said my next question was going to be like, do you play instruments now? Yeah, okay, but... okay, okay, no, no, the answer, no, I, I, don't, I would, I think, I think I'd, I wish I learned guitar, but I don't wish I learned guitar, I didn't, but I mean, guitar has been cool, I'm, uh, but I never gave that a shot, and, uh, and now I just, now I don't really, I don't really have the dexterity in my fingers, obviously, but I obviously don't have the urge to, I'm happy now with what I'm doing, and, uh, this music and uh yeah but i mean i i play i uh, say i play piano for two years is you know that's even that's even a bit grandiose i took lessons and that's i play a few chords so i could i don't anymore but i could play a few chords and stuff you play that uh that 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 that, that, that what's that blue moon or you know that you know that classic yeah that song I know that it. I played that there was other one there's like that Richard Marx song. Do 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 wherever you go or if you do, I'll be I'll be right here waiting for you. <laughs> yeah. do, do. I can play that one like <laughs> one key at a time. So I can do that. There you <laughs> go. This time. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. And so Taylor, yeah. so what's your what's your music? Oh, um, I don't know, like, it, it used to just be, um, like, hip-hop, but uh, now it's it's kind of, like, a little bit of everything. Um, like, not, like, rock or punk, um, and not, like, um, any, like, electronic music, but just kind of, like, a little bit of everything now. Um, I think as I've, st like, since I came to university and, like, uh, started hanging out with people who were like musical and stuff like i like got emily? exposed to a lot more di yeah like emily i got exposed to a, a like a lot of different music um that like i'd never been exposed to or like thought about um so yeah a little bit of everything honestly now cool but you Aaron? Uh, I'm going to read off my Spotify like songs because it tells me the genres I like. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know, but it tells me apparently my most downloaded songs are, these are the categories it gives me. Chill, indie, happy, modern rock, indie folk, classic rock, sad, dream pop, <laughs> and indie rock. <laughs> sad. Sad? Yeah, sad is a, there's only like I'm, one sad. I didn't know sad is a genre. Sad, 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 sad. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, within there, it's like the Black Keys, Fleetwood Mac, MGMT, Raylan Baxter, uh, Vampire Weekend, um, and Looking Through. The Lumineers, that was the last concert I saw actually before COVID shut things down. Okay. Yeah. Bunch of that, everything. Oh, mixed yeah. in. I, I also the, the uh, Arctic Monkeys are another band, they're they're band, they're in a T live now. Mm. Arctic Monkeys, I love them. Okay. I got their, yeah, mm -hmm. nice, cool. Um, Emily, did you have any other questions uh -huh. or like your music? What was your main one? Emily's just t Emily's on like a like a 
like a cloud right now just about talking about all the <laughs> music. Yeah, I could talk about 90s music for forever. Um, but I can talk more about my music when we do my get to know you. Yeah. Um, yeah <laughs> but yeah, no, it's it was it was nice chatting with you, like talking to you about um, stuff besides concussion. And I think that's like sometimes important for some people to remember that yeah. like um, there are other things. Um, and I think that like there's, you know, getting caught up on your own injury. But then I think a separate thing is like seeking um, knowledge and education and sharing. So I think those are two different yeah. things for you. And I think that's a really good point. Yeah, um, being like being mindful about like focusing on yourself, but realize it's not about you and it's about like, it's about the whole, like everything, everybody, the whole world, the whole community, friendships, yeah. friends around you and stuff. So, yeah. No, that's yeah. true. And I, and I mean, I think it's also good for like the people that listen to the podcast to like, and like realize that um you know you are like there are other things to you that like aren't talked about on all the podcasts and stuff um like we just talked about your music tastes wouldn't have known that otherwise yeah, well, and I, like knowing, I no, but like i don't know i'm someone that likes knowing things about people like i just like <laughs> knowing things in general you're like you're nosy <laughs> Well, I'm just observant, you know, like I'm a people watcher, you know, like I won't. Yeah. I heard of, people, heard of people anyway. <laughs> Whatever, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> I just like knowing things. I it's for me, it's like an issue of uncertainty and anxiety. But anyways, back to the point. Um, yes. I think it's like, I don't know. I think it's cool to, um, like for people to know more things like I mean I only really knew what I'd read on like uh like concussion talk like about like your story and I guess like when you came and shared at the support group like last May or April yeah, or something yeah, yeah. um but other than that I didn't really know anything about you yeah. I talked to you once a week we do that's a podcast true. together true. but I didn't know anything that's true. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah. but yeah I think it was a I think this was a really good episode I like this idea Emily good job this is a this is a good idea yeah good job Emily yeah. Um, thanks, guys. Aaron, Emily, any final? Emily's all like, hee hee, I know. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just satisfied knowing that Nick likes 90s music. <laughs> I'm satisfied. Just give me think about I that all day. <laughs> no, that's what I'm going to listen to in the car today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Um, all right. Anything I'm good. All right. Aaron? We've, we've no. gone on for a while, so. Alrighty. Um, so thanks, Nick, for one, stop, helping stop. us do the podcast. Um, <laughs> I thought Sorry, Aaron was my cat Aaron, Aaron's cat. Classic, and he has been insane this whole time. <laughs> okay. I apologize. No, <laughs> no. a little surgeon now. I'm not just yelling stuff at Tana. <laughs> <laughs> at first, I was like, what? Like, I, okay. Um, Anyways, so, <laughs> Nick, um, yes. thanks, Nick, for helping us do the podcast and also just uh, coming to the support group, talking to the support group, and doing the little, like, Q&A with us. Oh, um, so we'll have a new podcast posted Monday morning. Our upcoming podcast can be found on concussiontalk.com, Spotify, YouTube, and Apple Podcasts. Um, you can find more information about our group on concussionmtl.com. Our peer-to-peer -peer support group is free and open to everyone. We hold four weekly meetings, um, one of which is in French. Um, and we're always looking for more speakers. Um, thanks, Aaron and Emily. And thanks for listening. Head Check Health bridges gaps in concussion care through simple, powerful technology. Join organizations like the Canadian Football League, Trek Factory Racing, the Canadian Junior Hockey League, Eastern Washington University, and Volleyball Canada who rely on Head Check to improve communication and optimize care. Visit headcheckhealth.com for more. The music at the beginning of this podcast is by Ben Sound. W www.bensound.com